Good morning. But before we go any further, we're going to do things just a little out of order, a little different today, so, so bear with us. Uh, appreciate the song, Mary June and the youth coming up and, and focusing us on what we're here for in, in this time of year. You know, this, this has been a pretty tragic weekend, and probably most everyone here knows someone uh, that's been affected in some way by the storms, not to mention all the other things going on. Uh, in, in the world around us. And I just felt it appropriate to, to start service off in a little bit different fashion this morning. I'm, I'm going to ask anybody that wants to, don't feel obligated. Uh, you, you just do what you feel comfortable. But anybody that wants to, we're going to gather for an altar of prayer. Just pray for our community. Pray for people infected in Bowling Green, uh, all, all the other surrounding communities that's been affected by the tornadoes, the, the massive loss of life and and injuries that's taking place. We just want to lift them up to the Lord in prayer before we continue into our worship service. So all that would like to come and gather, you can come up here with us. We're just going to have a time of prayer together, and then after that, we'll let the kids be dismissed to head out to Children's Church, and the choir can come up. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born while shepherds kept their watching or silent flocks by night behold throughout the heavens there shone a holy light go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lowly manger, our humble Christ was born. And God sent a salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Let's, uh, let's go back to the Lord in prayer this morning. If you would, bow with me. Father, we pause for a moment again to approach your throne. Lord, to give you thanks and give you praise. God, today we, we know today we're not worthy to give you praise, but God, we know today you're worthy of all our praise that we could ever muster up. And we come to you today, Lord, with, uh, with heavy hearts, with things that's on our hearts and minds, with our communities, Lord, families and it's been affected, Lord. God, most of all, worst of all, we, we come with heavy hearts for those that are lost today. And God, who don't know you, who don't have that personal relationship. Father, this morning, we want to lift these folks up to you. God, things that's going on in their lives and personal lives, Lord, but worst of all, in their spiritual lives. God, you just somehow, some way, intervene in our lives, God, whether it's through us or through someone else. And Father, today as we go into this service, we're thankful for the ones that are here. God, that came out for worship this morning. God, that we have that opportunity to come into your house once again, and we just are so thankful for that. Thankful for our Sunday school lesson, for our fellowship this morning, for the singing. Father, looking forward to the words that our brother is going to bring here shortly, Lord, lifting him up, that you'd anoint him today. Father, his words would be your words. For the choirs they sing, for those that have specials, God, just a special touch for them. Father, we just want you to have your way with this service this morning. And Father, as we get ready to leave, may we say it's been good to be in your house. And also, Lord, if there be a need or a lost soul in our midst, may today be the day they come to you before it's everlasting too late. Again, Father, we thank you for your son who died on that cross so that we could have eternal life. Again, we thank you. It's in your name we do pray and ask these things. Amen. You may be seated. If you have your Bibles with you, you can be turning with me to the book of Luke. 
second chapter is where we're going to be taking our scripture this morning. And for those that have been here, you know, we've been weekly seeing a, a new piece in the nativity. And whenever you, you look there, we've still got some pieces that are missing. But this week we have a, a new figurine. And it's probably one of the lesser known uh, people that we think of or peoples that we think of. We don't know a lot about them, but one of their their story is one of the ones that is most often quoted. It's one that we sing about quite a bit, just as we did uh, this morning, and that is the story of the shepherds. And that's on this morning. For some reason, it seems that we're having some microphone issues. David, I'm going to pick up this one just so that... Been a long time since I've used one of these, so y'all going to have to bear with me. So, Luke chapter 2, starting at verse 8, is where we're going to take our scripture. We're going to look at the thought of the shepherds, and as we look at the thought of the shepherds, we're going to uh, notice a few things about them. We're going to start by looking at the meeting of the shepherds, how this meeting took place, and you know it didn't take place by accident. It had uh, God's design in it from the start. So pay attention to that as we read the first couple of verses of scripture, scripture here in Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 say this. It says, Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they we're greatly afraid. So as we look here in this scripture, the very first thing that we see is this meeting of the shepherds that takes place. There's going to be a great meeting take place, and, and I want you to notice their faithfulness. Notice their faithfulness in the midst of it. The faithfulness of the shepherds is part of the reason why this meeting gets to take place. Most of us probably on a daily basis have tasks that we are expected to do that we consider routine. We wake up and we hit the alarm clock and we prepare to go into a job and for some of us we're excited about it. For some of us we might think, well, this is yet again just another day. For some of us we might want to keep hitting that snooze button and say, well, maybe I can call in today. Or, or maybe if you're one of the kids here, you're like, I wonder if I could get out of going to school today. We, we, we think of those things that, that we might not always enjoy to do, but we have responsibilities in life. And, and, and sometimes in the midst of those responsibilities, by just us doing what we're supposed to do, God can open a door or an opportunity for something awesome to happen. And that's what takes place. It tells us here that they were just out abiding in the fields. The shepherds were exactly where the shepherds were supposed to be. They were out doing their jobs. It says they're where they're supposed to be. They're working in something that's not considered some luxurious workplace. You might not think that, oh, I'm not that special. I, I just work at such and such and I don't want to insult anybody it doesn't matter what you do it's if you do it and you do it like you're supposed to God can use you in the midst of it and there again these guys they're just they're just farm hands and, and as we'll look at a little later they're not highly respected people they're not highly thought of individuals. They are out. They are probably filthy and dirty and stinky. They're just out hanging out in the fields. And look what it says they're doing. They're, they're keeping watch over their flock. They're watching their flock. They're keeping their eye out. They're taking care of their responsibility. One of the things I was taught by my parents, especially my dad at a young age, is when you, when you have a job, you need to try to do and do your best. Whether it was out in the tobacco patch growing up or if I was out mowing the yard or, or, or chopping weeds out in the garden, he, he expected me to try and to do my best. And, and, and these guys were, were doing that. They were out doing exactly what they were supposed to. They were keeping an eye out over the flock, making sure predators and other, peop, other things that could, could come and cause problems to the sheep weren't doing them any harm. And it says that they're doing it. At night. Now, I, I don't know, but 
for some of you, probably there's some of you that don't really like the dark. That you, you, you may get a little nervous about being out in the dark. Now, some, you, even some of y'all guys, I know you're going to act tough, but I know if we go out in the woods in the middle of the night, hanging out, you're going to hear those sounds, and there's going to be something in the back of your head saying, I don't know what's going on, but I don't really like it. it to be a shepherd out in the field, there wasn't any assault rifles. They didn't have flashlights with LED bulbs that could shoot a beam out miles in advance. They didn't have a lot of the technology that we have today. They couldn't cut on night vision and see a predator way off in the distance. They had to be prepared for whatever would come their way and would be on them in a moment's notice. It, it was a job that took bravery to do. And these, these guys were out there, and they're out there doing their job. In spite of it being the middle of the night, they may have family they want to get back to. They're doing exactly what they're supposed to. They're being faithful to do what they're supposed to. So in this meeting, we see the faithfulness of them, but we also notice a little something else that, that's not necessarily expected amongst the shepherds. In the initial, is we notice their fearfulness as well. It tells us as the angel appears and, and this light shines out, it says that they were greatly afraid. Now, I, I've got to tell you, one of the things that I used to really enjoy doing years ago, I haven't done it very often in, in several years, but when Julie and I were first married, I used to love to go into the house somewhere and hide. And then she not know where I was at and jump out and scare her. I, I got great enjoyment and satisfaction out of it. She never did. And it got to a place that if she didn't know where I was at, I could just be in the, in the bedroom doing something. She would start yelling, Andy, Andy, Andy. She would want to hear my voice before she proceeded to walk through the house because she was afraid that I might jump out and startle her. Have you ever been out, like even maybe this, this past week, been out and, and all of a sudden a big lightning bolt flashes unexpectedly? Sometimes it can startle us. Well, I can't imagine <laughs> what kind of shock and awe took, takes place here with, with these shepherds. I, I, Wednesday night as we were uh, talking about the angels even, I, I related to like this, I mean, can you imagine the 4th of July type fireworks show that they're seeing when this takes place and, and it startles them. We, we tell the scripture tells us that there's a, a such thing as having a healthy fear the scripture tells us that fearing the Lord is the beginning of wisdom actually that we should have a healthy fear of the Lord but that's not the fear that they're talking about here this is an unhealthy fear it's it had been a problem for, for the Jewish people for, for years. Adam and Eve uh, hid from God in the garden. Moses uh, and, and the people especially that, that were with him feared the Pharaoh and, and leaving Egypt at first. And then even after they're out and the Lord's given them this great escape, they even fear to go into the promised land because of what's ahead. See, the scripture tells us in, in, in 1 John chapter 4, it tells us there is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out all fear. For the shepherds that night, they didn't know what was taking place, but what took place at the very beginning of this meeting is the message to the angels is don't fear. For, for some of you today, you, you might have... Uh, had a relationship with God at one time, and it may not be where it once was. Maybe today you've never had that relationship. And maybe today that causes you concern. Now, first thing I, I want you to understand is God wants you to have a place of peace. He wants you to find that place of peace. Now, you can't find that by anything that I can offer you. But you can find that in that relationship with the Lord today. Here they come with a message of peace to him. They said, don't, don't be afraid. The, so we see this meeting of the shepherds. The second thing I, I want you to take note of is the message for the shepherds. There's going to be more. It starts off with saying, don't fear, but they're going to tell them so much more. Look at these next couple of verses. In verses 10 and 11, it continues on. And it says, and then the angel said to them, do not be afraid for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which, shall, which will be to all people. 
For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. You've probably, if you've read the Christmas story, you've heard it. You've been to Christmas plays, whatever. You've heard these verses time and time again. And I'm not going to elaborate on them a lot, but I do want to break it down just a little bit. It's really clear. Their message is, for one, a Savior is born. For years, the Jewish people have been prophesying about, talking about, looking forward to this Messiah that was to come. This new ruler who is to come. And here they are given this message that, that it's time. This time has came. It may not have came in the same form and fashion, and, and especially in the same location that, that most would have expected. But they tell us that the Savior is born. They, they tell them, the angels tell them that the Scripture has been fulfilled. If you actually heard in, in the Scripture that June shared when she sang her song, it comes out of the book of Isaiah, chapter 9. It's, it's really important prophecy that was given to Isaiah hundreds of years before Christ would come. But it says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And it says, of the increase of his government and the peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David tells us how this one would come and what his role would be and even from the lineage he would come from. All contained in those few verses of scripture that Isaiah shared so many hundreds of years before. And and the angels are telling them that the scripture has been fulfilled. This is the one that the ancients have talked about. And they also say this, and, and you don't want to miss it. It says, who is Christ the Lord? They could have said, well, Jesus is born in Bethlehem. Go see him. But but I want you to understand, Jesus was actually a fairly common name in that day. If they would have just said, well, there's this kid named Jesus that's born. You need to go check him out. That could have been like saying Andy was born. It was a fairly common name. It wasn't something that that was unfamiliar. It wasn't something that was unheard. But this child wasn't just another Jesus. He was Jesus the Christ, the Lord. He was the Jesus. He was the one that, that they needed to know about, that all of humanity would have needed to know about. And here the angels make it very clear that in the city of David, that you're going to find this Savior who is Christ the Lord. We live in a culture, in a day and an age where people think that there is all sorts of routes and paths to an eternal home. Seems like, I don't know, I don't even keep up with it anymore, but for years Oprah had somebody new on every month or two that had some new path to get to some kind of eternal reward. Listen, the the angels knew something that Oprah didn't want to say. There's only one way. Jesus reiterated it all throughout his life. He is the Christ child. He was the one and only way. And guess who got to know that message from the very beginning? These nasty old shepherds that's hanging out in the field. They're they're doing their job. They're in the right place. They're doing what they're supposed to. It was just another ordinary day, but they were just doing what they were supposed to. And the angels come with this great message for them. The final thing that I want you to see is what takes place after. And that's the movement of the shepherds. You see, each one of you, whether you recognize it or not, you're not much different than the shepherds today. These first two parts could be you. 
You're where you're supposed to be. You're doing what you're supposed to. You've been faithful to do it. You might even be a little fearful of what might happen. But you're exactly where you're supposed to be. You're hearing. The Lord knew you would be here before you knew you would be here, just like he did with the shepherds. And guess what? He has the same message for you today that he had for them then, that there was a Christ that came to this earth to take your place, and he was born in this little town of Bethlehem, and he was going to shake the world up. Now, the final thing is, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? See, the shepherds heard this message, and it sparked them to move. It goes on there, verses 12 through 20, and it says, And this will be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that's come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God. For all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. Final thing. We see after they've heard the message, then they responded. They weren't content to stay where they had been. You know, it's really easy for us to get really content with life just how it is. Don't ask me to change. Don't ask me to do something. Don't ask me to step outside my comfort zone. Don't ask me to sacrifice anything. It says that they heard the message and they went to seek out the Savior. It says they they immediately went to find this baby. They didn't wait until morning. They didn't wait until they could find some replacements to come out into the fields and take care of their flock. They didn't make any excuses to stay home or or to do anything else. I want you to understand, sometimes following the Lord might cause us to have to sacrifice some things, to leave some things behind. There might be some old habits and some vices that we have to give up. There might be some friends that we have to kind of distance ourselves from. It doesn't mean we have to give up on them, but we don't keep doing the same old things. It may not always be easy To go and follow the Lord. Sometimes you may have to leave some things behind that you really like. Even something that might be connected to your livelihood. Like the shepherds. But that's what they do. They immediately leave to find this baby. And it says they make haste. Can you imagine the excitement they have? Can you imagine the excitement they have that they have had this angel come and give them this message and then this whole host of them come and all these things that they've seen and they are so excited it says that they immediately get prepared to leave and that they make haste they don't let any grass grow underneath their feet underneath their feet I don't know if they get on some form of camel or horse or whatever, but I'm sure they have that thing in overdrive they, I mean it's spitting and slobbering they're trying to get there as soon as as possible. Let me tell you something. And probably so many can relate. When, when you have the Lord urging you to do something, don't delay. I, 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 I've been there and I've done it on numerous occasions over numerous things. I can remember as, a, as an eight-year-old boy, the Lord spoke speaking to me and and just telling me, you know, it was time for me to receive him as my Lord and Savior and waiting weeks. And I can remember every time that that song leader would get up and sing that song, I would grab the back of that pew and and I probably have imprints in the back of that pew from where I white knuckled it so hard and just think, oh, I can put it off another week. 
I can remember later as I got older and the Lord wanted me to go into ministry and me not knowing and not being sure and being uncertain and finally getting to the day in which I had full confirmation and then just immediately responding. You know, you don't need to delay. When you, when you feel the Lord speak to you, I've never seen an angel. I haven't had an audible voice from the Lord. I haven't went through those things that the shepherds have. But you know when the Lord speaks to you. That still small voice deep down inside tells you, don't delay. Do just the opposite. Do what the shepherds did. We need to make haste and go to the Lord. It tells us that they do that. And then because they do that, they have a life-changing encounter when they meet Jesus. Now, I'm going to tell you, folks. When you meet Jesus, it will be a life-changing encounter. If it isn't, I, I don't know if you've really met him. You may say, well, I'm not a bad person. You, I'm not saying you had to have completely changed your lifestyle, but your entire focus should change. What's important to you should change. Your attitude should change. There's things that will take place when you encounter Christ. You notice here? They go and they see him. They find out of this Savior, which is for all people. And in verse 17, it says, after they seen him, you know what they did? They don't go back to their, to their sheep. They don't go back to the herd, to the flock. It says, they go and make widely known the saying which was told to them concerning the child. And then it goes on and it says that because they went out and shared the message, you know what happened? People stood in amazement. They became people of influence. Today, you, you might say, <laughs> I, I, Brother Andy, I, I've, I've done that. I've encountered Christ. Well, well, let me ask you this question. If you've encountered him, what have you done about it? When's the last time somebody stood in amazement or just had curiosity because you shared your testimony of what Jesus had done for you? See, these shepherds, they were unafraid and unashamed. And really, see, truthfully, if you, if you don't understand the full capacity of the shepherd, I, I, I want to kind of bring it to a conclusion with that. Of all the people, you might say, well, I'm not capable of telling people, or to talk to people about Jesus. I'm not capable of doing that. This, this right here is the figurine of the shepherd. And, and probably if you've got a nativity set, it looks something like that. And it looks really pretty and really clean and all that. I'm going to tell you folks, <laughs> our mental image of things, whether it's a nativity set or whether it's the cross, generally isn't how it was. This guy wouldn't have looked like this. He, he would have been nasty and filthy and unshaven and unkept. And because of that, shepherds as a whole, even the Jewish shepherds were despised by their own people. They were looked down upon. They were considered some of the lowest classes of people of, of all. They weren't allowed to come and worship because they couldn't, take care of the ritualistic cleansings and things that, that all the others could do. Matter of fact, the law that, that man had developed over the years even said that the Jewish people were forbidden to show charity to the shepherds because of how disgusting they were. See, we think of the shepherds like this, but that's really not how they were. You say, why am I saying that to you? When you truly see who God reached out to first with those angels, the first people they told of Jesus' birth, they weren't the, the worthy or the deserving. They weren't the religious people. They were the lowest of the low, the common, ordinary sinner. That's who God reached out to first. And, you know, that's who he's still reaching out to today. It doesn't matter what we've done. It doesn't matter our past. It doesn't matter any indiscretion that we've committed. God still wants to reach out to us today. 
And he still wants to make that life-altering change in our life so that we, like those shepherds, can go out and share his story. Today, I don't know where you stand with the Lord, but I know if you stand unprepared to meet him, that he wants to make that difference in you today. As they lead us in this song of invitation, if you have need to come, maybe you have need to come and pray, maybe you've got a burden on your heart, we invite you to do that. If you would, rise to your feet. Thankful we have a Lord that we can come to at any time, no matter the need, no matter what's going on, and he desires that of us. Sometimes, sometimes it's easy to be cynical and get frustrated and Sometimes the burdens of others can frustrate us. But God doesn't feel that way. He, he says for us to cast our cares upon him because he cares for us. And he means that. And I hope you know that you can do that. Just want to thank you for being here today. Appreciate those who have come this way. Hope that the Lord has spoke to you in some way. Again, be, be much in prayer for our community. If you get the opportunity, bless somebody this week. Reach out to somebody. Help somebody um, that, that, that stands in need as you get the opportunity to do that. Again, thank you for being here. May God bless you this week.